mother was a smoker. She smoked her whole life. She was addicted to nicotine. When she turned 71, a little after that, she was diagnosed with lung cancer. No one came to me and said, don't treat her because she got what she deserved. If it's heroin or cocaine or alcohol, we say, well, they decided they're getting what they deserved. Governor Chris Christie offering a different perspective on how we view drug addicts. A new report now indicates our Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA, is seeing the numbers of those using heroin to be skyrocketing across our nation. That's something we need to talk about, and we will do so right now. Joining us via Skype from Monroe, North Carolina, DEA instructor Rodney Pierce, and from our own Newsmax newsroom, Nick Tate, Newsmax health editor and co-author of the book, Da Vinci's Baby Boomer Survival Guide. Nick, first to you, what's behind these skyrocketing numbers of heroin users? Well, J.D., it's a couple things. I think, first of all, there is a, a wide problem in terms of mental health problems that people need uh, attention paid to that we are not paying attention to. There's also enormous stresses from an economic standpoint that people are suffering. And we know when we go through difficult economic times, one of the ways people deal with their stresses is they turn to drugs, not just heroin, but also prescription drugs as well. And I think this is emblematic of that. Rodney, there is a tendency to look at heroin addiction as a problem unique to the inner cities. But that is not necessarily the case any longer, is it? That is simply not true. We have seen over the last several years the heroin epidemic moving from the inner city into the smaller cities. I'm a police officer in Monroe, North Carolina. Uh, we're just east of Charlotte, a town of about 35,000. Our, our heroin use is, is skyrocketing as well. And speaking to officers in other towns our size and smaller, they, they're starting to see a lot of heroin in the last few years. Uh, Rodney, we heard Governor Chris Christie say we really need to view drug addicts more like smokers. D do you agree with that approach? I think there's a two. Uh, the approach has to be multi-level. We need to the enforcement side, obviously, but we need to also treat people's addiction and, and find out why they're why they're turning to drugs or or other uh, other substances to alter their lives or or to ease their pain outside of traditional medicine. And there are people who are very prominent who are dealing with this challenge. Jeb Bush talked with the Huffington Post about the struggles his own daughter has had with drug addiction. Let's listen to what Governor Bush had to say. She went through hell, and so did, so did her mom and so did her dad. And it was both in a private, private setting, but then it became very public when I was governor. And it wasn't easy. Uh, Governor Jeb Bush there on the campaign trail. Uh, Nick, it is interesting when we take a look at issues in New Hampshire, drug use and uh, the whole notion of drug policy is now the most important issue. Uh, will the political spotlight help put more of a focus on dealing with heroin addiction? Well, let's hope so. And not just heroin addiction, I think, but all kinds of drug addiction. We, as as uh, Jeb Bush and Governor Christie have said, it affects lots of folks. Lots of families are affected. There are a lot of people in pain, emotional pain, physical pain, that are turning to drugs, their Band-Aid solution, and they are more of a problem than the problem they're trying to fix. So the hope is that it's risen to the level of national presidential campaign politics. It will draw more attention. Maybe we can talk about some solutions. Rodney, in terms of the nuts and bolts and the distribution of heroin, where is most of it coming from into this nation? Well, in our area and most of the areas in the, in the south, it's black tar heroin, and it's coming from Mexico. Uh, that's, that's the prominent heroin that we're seeing. Uh, it, it's, it's not like riding up on the street trying to find someone selling heroin. It's simple as ordering a pizza. Um, our, our users, they have a contact number. They, they call that number may be... In Texas, maybe Phoenix, and in turn, that contact number calls a runner, and, and they meet the people in a location, usually out in public, fast food restaurant, parking lot, and they do the deal there. So, uh, that's, let me you just ask your opinion. Let me ask your opinion on this, Rodney. Uh, is our porous southern border adding to this problem with all the black tar coming in from Mexico? Um, well, it's getting in, and, and the methods change. We, we think we get a hook on one and, and they change, whether it's in the trucking uh, tunnels. It's, it's coming in in large amount. It's not all coming in 
on on people. Well, Carson it Gary. is obviously something we will have to keep an eye on. Nick Tate, uh, 20 seconds to you, sir, for the last word. Well, I think we're going to need to be paying a lot more attention to this, not only in terms of prescription practices by doctors, but what we're doing from a law enforcement perspective to recognize this is a bigger problem, kills more people than guns, kills more people than car accidents, and it just has not gotten the attention it deserves, and it needs to. All right, we will continue to take a look at this. In the meantime, learn how to survive the baby boomer financial crisis with the newly released book, Da Vinci's Baby Boomer Survival Guide by going to the website babyboomers711.com. We'd like to get your comments on rising drug use. Send us your comments. Go to newsmaxtv.com slash comments, and we'll be right back.